This video will take everything we learned from the last and build a multi-stage coil gun that uses the best performing coil, the projectile that reaches the highest top speed, and the projectile that produces the greatest kinetic energy. We'll optimize the design that manages to reach a top speed of 47.9 meters a second and has a kinetic energy of 17.4 joules. So let's see how we can build it and later see exactly what it's capable of. The biggest improvement that we made this time is controlling the firing of each coil. To do this for the first stage, with the projectile placed near the start of the coil, we energize the coil, then as the magnetic field pulls the projectile in, as it reaches the center of the coil, we switch the power off, collapsing the magnetic field, which would otherwise be pulling the projectile back into the coil and slowing it down as it passes through to the other side. For each subsequent stage though, we need to know how the current flows through an inductor, which in our case is a coil. Unlike when a capacitor is discharged through a resistive circuit, where the current starts at its peak and decreases over time, when a capacitor is discharged through an inductive circuit, it takes time for the current to increase to its peak before eventually falling to zero. So in this case, we don't want to switch the coil on as the projectile reaches the start of it, as it takes time for the current through the coil to reach its peak, and with the strength of the magnetic field being the strongest when the current flowing through it is the highest, we want to time it so the projectile enters the coil when the strength of the magnetic field is at its highest and producing the most force to accelerate the projectile. So now we have a bit of a plan, all that's left to do is build the circuits to control it all. To do that, we mix a few AT Tiny 85 microcontrollers, a pinch of capacitors, a healthy amount of resistors, a splash of MOSFETs and transistors, or with a bit of solder. And there you have it, the boards to control the firing sequence. Then, to switch the power to each of the coils, we have two IGBTs in parallel to protect against the voltage spikes caused by the collapsing magnetic fields. We have Schottky diodes across both the collector and the emitter of the IGBT and in parallel with the coils. So to test everything is working correctly and to set a baseline, we will fire the first shots discharging the capacitor bank completely. When doing this, the 15 millimeter long projectile reaches a top speed of 22.4 meters a second and the 30 millimeter long projectile reaches a top speed of 19.1 meters a second. Now using these results, we can calculate the projectile's kinetic energy. To do that, using the kinetic energy formula, we multiply half by the mass in the case of the 15 millimeter projectile is 8.46 grams and the 30 millimeter is 17.01 grams. Then all that multiplied by the velocity squared. When we calculate that, we end up with a kinetic energy of 2.12 joules for the 15 millimeter and 3.1 joules for the 30 millimeter. The efficiency is calculated by first working out the initial energy stored in the capacitor bank by using the equation, energy in joules equals half times the capacitance in farads, times the voltage squared. We then minus the energy remaining in the capacitor bank after the shot has been fired to get the energy used. Then we divide the projectile's kinetic energy by the energy used and multiply it by 100 over one. When calculated, we end up with an efficiency of 1.64% for the 15 millimeter and 2.4% for the 30 millimeter. Now to adjust the time the first coil is energized for and see what improvements we can make. After many timing adjustments and a whole lot of back and forth, the first stage with the 15 millimeter long projectile reaches a top speed of 25 meters a second. And with the 30 millimeter long projectile, which is a top speed of 21.4 meters a second. Now, we just gotta add the rest of the stages in. With the optimal firing times found for the second stage, the 15 millimeter projectile 
measures in at 35 meters a second, and the 30 millimeter projectile reaches a top speed of 31.3 meters a second. There was an issue though when adding in the third stage as the projectiles were moving too fast for the light gate to function as intended. Even when switching the coil, as soon as the light gate is broken, the projectile had passed the center of the third stage coil before the current discharge from the capacitors could reach its peak level. To get around this, I had to use the signal from the previous light gate being broken and the speed of the projectile measured after the second stage to give me a starting point of the delay to use and the amount of time to energize the coil for. Eventually, after a number of tests, we ended up with the 15 millimeter projectile reaching a top speed of 42.5 meters a second and the 30 millimeter projectile reaching a top speed of 38.8 meters a second. When adding in the fourth stage, we had to do the same as the third and use the previous stage's light gate. With the timing dialed in, we got the 15 millimeter long projectile to reach a top speed of 47.9 meters a second and the 30 millimeter projectile reached a top speed of 45 2 meters a second. Now to compare all the results. Starting with the 15 millimeter projectile, when adjusting the energized time of the first coil, it increased the energy by 24.5% to 2.64 joules, and the efficiency increased by 46% to 2.4%. With the second stage added in, the energy of the projectile rose to 5.18 joules with an efficiency of 2.88%, followed by the third stage at 7.64 joules at 3.06% efficiency, and finally the fourth stage increased the projectile's energy to 9.7 joules at an efficiency of 3.03%. On to the 30 millimeter projectile, with the first coil's energized time optimized, it increased the projectile's energy by 25.5% to 3.89 joules, with an efficiency increase of 45% to 3.48%. The second stage increased the energy to 8.33 joules at an efficiency of 4.5%, followed by the third stage with 12.8 eight joules of projectile energy at 4.96% efficiency. And finally, the fourth stage reached a projectile energy of 17.38 joules with an efficiency of 5.24%. What really surprised me about this was how much more efficient the whole system became when adding additional stages. The 15 millimeter projectile seemed to plateau out at the fourth stage, but the longer projectile's efficiency kept increasing. So it'll be worthwhile in the next iteration testing how many stages it takes for the longer projectile's efficiency to plateau out. Just showing a bunch of results doesn't really show what it's capable of, so let's compare it to something. In three, two, one. Well, looks like it's fast and I can pull the slingshot back. Now for the fun part. Let's shoot it at stuff. In three, two, one. In three, two, one. Looks like it went straight through. Not bad for a blunt projectile, but I bet it would penetrate a lot better with the sharper end. It is too round on the top, it needs to be pointy. Round is not scary, pointy is scary. This will put a smile on the faces of the enemy. In three, two, one. In 
three, two, one. Now that's got me thinking, I wonder what would happen if it hit someone. To answer that, I have my first attempt at making a batch of ballistics gel. By no means is it probably even close to being the same consistency, but it'll be a bit of fun. Sharpened projectile, a ballistics gel in three, two, one. Only thing stopped it from going all the way through was the plywood on the other side. Well, let's just say you probably wouldn't want to be standing in front of that. The most surprising thing to me through this whole project was how adding additional stages made the whole system more efficient. Going further with the project, I'll just be sticking with using the longer 30 millimeter long projectiles as the top speed was comparable to the shorter projectile, but the kinetic energy was about double. That leaves me with a few things to think about to improve on the next design. If you have any ideas of improvements that I could try, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.